The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The wisdom of Jesus Christ. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God. Him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your feet against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to come back to this in the heart of the uh, homily, but just just so that we're from the beginning. That expression, if you are the Son of God, does not have to do with belief in the divinity of Jesus. It's the reference to his baptism, actually. If you remember in Luke's Gospel, at his baptism just before this, uh, as he came up from the water, this is my beloved Son. That is to say, somebody destined to do God's will, somebody appointed to do, even in the Old Testament, frequently those people who had special tasks in the world were called God's sons. Son of God David was son of God. Moses was the son of God. So this is not some kind of test of belief. It's a test about what he was supposed to be doing in the world. But I want to come back to that because it will fit better in the middle of the, of the homily. It's important, I think, uh, because we're in a a very intense liturgical season, to begin by reminding ourselves that about what it means to live Lent. We talked about this on Ash Wednesday, and I'll repeat just one part of it. It's a thing I thought of this year which helps me to think about it. All of Lent is aiming to Easter. In fact, all of Lent is aiming to a single moment, primarily in in the great vigil ceremony or in the Mass at Easter morning. And it's by, say, aiming it to it, I'm supposed to come there more real, more alive, more ready to do this one thing that takes place in that Mass. And that is to renew my baptismal vows. All of Lent has to... And the, the expression I'm using for myself, I just find this helpful, so I pass it on to you. I'm trying to live in such a way in the next six weeks that at the end of that time, I will be baptized again. And I, found that, I find that much more helpful than just saying I'm going to renew my... It's more vivid, I think, okay? And it, and there, it is true. Humanly, I'm going to assume the reality, I'm going to enter the reality of my baptism. There's, there's a kind of simple analogy to this in people who are married. After they're married a long time, they often get married again. They renew their marriage vows. They, they, and they do, literally, marry each other again. It would be pretty interesting and wonderful, I think, if people married themselves, married this each year, got married again on the anniversary of their marriage. And I, it occurred to me, I don't know if we can start this, but this, is, this would be a really good thing. If instead, of, I thought this week, why do we celebrate birthdays? The life we're born into, we're, for Christians, the life I've been born into when I was born is only important for us because it has made it possible for me to be born into Christ in baptism. I wonder why no Catholic tradition has ever celebrated People's Baptism Day. What it would be like if every year you celebrated your baptism. It would remind you that this is the most significant thing about you, so that even when you come to a liturgical time like this, you would be much more aware that it has to do with everything in your life. What does it mean to be baptized? I don't know.